Hey guys, welcome back. This is Bernardo from the BJ Tech News, the only place where you can get your daily tech reports, tips and tricks on hardware and software, and do not forget about geeky related topics. Uh, yeah, SharePoint Foundation 2010, as you can see at the screen. Uh, this is the video that I'm going to do for you guys today. The only reason that I'm doing uh, SharePoint Foundation 2010 because I'm trying to implement it at my job and I'm trying to give hardcore facts to my boss you know I'm trying to tell my boss uh, we need this and this is how it's has implemented uh, SharePoint services like right now this is a nice little brief introduction or uh, the facts of what it is it's an essential solution for organizations that need a secure and manageable web-based collaboration platform that's awesome. That's I've used SharePoint 2007 years years ago with uh, dealing with the Mac Task Force uh, as well as the Windows 7 Task Force, uh, Server Task Force, and the the collaboration and the documentation libraries and the calendars is great. Uh, I would like to implement it in my job to keep stuff in track for you know our techie stuff. So let's get started. Now I'm gonna actually provide this link for you guys at the bottom of the description. Now this video is gonna be a little long. I can just tell you right now it's gonna be a little long. The reason why? Because I'm gonna show you guys how to get yourself up and running. Uh, all the requirements that you need to get yourself up and running. And then hopefully this is gonna be a, a playlist. Hopefully this video goes well. And I'm gonna create a playlist for you guys. And I'm just gonna have more videos detailing of how to use it, what to do. It was also going to help me out in the long run to implement it at my job. So the first thing that you guys want to do is go to this link, which I'm going to provide at the description part, like I said before. Download it, and you're good to go. Now, the core requirements for this guy is you need to have Windows Server 2008 R2 or Windows Server 2008 Service Pack. Now, I tried to do it with Service 2012, and it gave me an error, so it did not work on that. 2003 is not going to work so these are the core requirements that you have it you really don't need any roles or services or features installed because uh, this bad boy will do everything for you that's the best thing I like about this new SharePoint foundation in 2010 so I'm going to close this and I'm going to bring my virtual machine now my virtual machine as I said you know this is the name of my virtual machine BJ dash SharePoint uh, it's not added to an active directory and the only reason that I'm not adding it to directory is because I'm not in office. I don't have an environment with a bunch of users. Again, best practice is that you do hook up your SharePoint into an Active Directory. The reason why is because it will go into your LDAP and retrieve all your users' accounts. And then when they log in, they can use the credentials of your Active Directory. That's a good thing. Now, I didn't add it into a domain. And I'm going to right click to go to properties and I'm going to show you what I have. And let that load up. There it goes. As you can see, I'm running Windows Server 2008 R2 Enterprise. Uh, it's not even activated because I'm just testing it out. And I'm, I'm still part of the work group, work group uh, domain. So let's close this out. I have a SharePoint folder inside my, oh, my desktop, not inside my desktop, on my desktop. And I got the SharePoint Foundation EXE which this guy is going to extract all the files that you need and it's going to start deploying and then I have a SQL manager studio 64 which is the express edition uh, it does install SQL server into your machine but it doesn't give you the management point uh, management application for you good for you guys to run your uh, custom queries so let's double click on this guy and let us do his thing is extracting the files and once the extraction is done, you're going to get a nice little dialog box with a lot of information that you guys go over. There's two sections that I really want to, you know, put focus on. Okay, so we are back. Once the files are extracted from the EXE, uh, this is what you get. You're going to get in a nice little SharePoint for Foundation 2010 dialog box. You got the prepare section, install, and other information. Uh, the two that I really want to focus is right here, install software prerequisites and also install the in SharePoint Foundation. The best thing about this little guy right here is that it installs everything that it needs before you can start installation. So that's pretty awesome. You could uh, do a review on the hardware and software requirements or the installation guide or the upgrade guide. It's really up to you. I'm going to click on the install software prerequisites. Once you click on that, you get this nice little dialog box basically giving you a rundown of what is going to be installed. Now, keep in mind is 
that once everything is installed a reboot is going to be needed okay keep that in mind a reboot will be needed and then you have to I believe start your SharePoint foundation exe again so you can start installing so let's let's uh, kick it off let's hit next I agree hit next and that's it this is where you guys uh, go get a cup of coffee or get something to snack on and hopefully uh, it should be done when we come back okay and we're back so as I said before uh, it looks like your system needs to restart you need guys uh, need to restart so just hit finish and it will automatically restart itself uh, once the installation is completed because again if you saw the list there's a uh, two or three windows updates that need to be pushed out and once it restarts uh, we can log in and continue the installation okay and we're back so my virtual machine already came back from restarting oops wrong command and uh, we're gonna log in and I'm not too sure if the SharePoint foundation uh, executable uh, file automatically starts up to continue in the installation I don't remember if I had to do that well let's see if it installs or it runs automatically okay cool it looks like the preparation tool hasn't finished uh, and it's going to continue doing its thing. So again, go <laughs> go take uh, a coffee break or a juice break or whatever kind of break you guys want. And uh, i see you guys when it's done. Actually, the, when the preparation tool is done. And then we can start the installation portion. And we're back. So the installation is completed. Awesome. I'm so excited. No errors. No problems. So we're going to hit finish. And I'm not too sure if the installation portion was is gonna pop up but if it doesn't uh, it's okay we're just gonna double click on that exe file and we're gonna start it up again doesn't look like it's doing anything so let's I'm gonna go back into my SharePoint 2010 foundation folder uh, double click on this guy let's start the extraction of the files again and once that's completed the nice little SharePoint 2010 foundation dialog box to pop up and I am going to click let's install because we install everything that we need for SharePoint foundation to work properly so I'm gonna close this window right here because I don't need it anymore pretty soon we're gonna be needing that folder uh, to install a SQL manager management studio and let's click install SharePoint foundation and you gotta read the Microsoft software license terms this is up to you if you guys have a lot have a lot a lot of time I'm not gonna read it I'm just gonna accept it and now you get two options. You got to stand alone on a server farm. Server farm, from my understanding, is if you have multiple SharePoint servers on the floor, you can connect all of them as to one, like a cluster kind of effect. I'm gonna do a standalone and uh, let it let it do its thing. Uh, hopefully, when that's done, we will be back. And we're back, guys. It looks like the configuration wizard is ready to be uh, initiated. Uh, so make sure this is checked off by default it is checked off but if it's not just check it you want to run the SharePoint product configuration wizard now so we're gonna close this bad boy up give it some time and then all the good stuff is gonna happen and so uh, it's gonna welcome you to the SharePoint product you wanna hit next uh, it's gonna basically tell you that these three services are going to be resetted or restarted when the wizard is completed hit yes once you do that you're good to go go take another water break or walk around the office or do something do something else to keep your mind uh, occupied because uh, this part right here takes a while there's 10 uh, tasks that the SharePoint Foundation 2010 needs to uh, do to complete itself the first one right now is configuring the database uh, which Later on, when the installation is completed, I'm going to show you guys how to install the SQL Management stool, Studio. About to say uh, stool, uh, studio, uh, so you guys could go check out the database and can play around with the database because that's the best thing. You can always manipulate the way uh, things are run if you have access to the database. So I'll catch you guys when this is done. And we're back. It looks like the configuration wizard is completed with success. That's always a great thing with us. Uh, it basically gives you a click finish to close. It looks like it is a D, about to say dose. Uh, <laughs> click here to close the wizard and navigate to the D4 SharePoint web application web page, homepage. 
Uh, the user may be prompted by the web browser for username in the form of domain, username, and password. So, because I don't have an Active Directory, I don't have a domain hooked up to this machine, uh, I have to log in with this. But most likely, you can configure it for users just to double click on the link and it will automatically go to the web page, logged in as them. So, we're going to click finish and I'm going to actually close this up. And as you can see, my browser automatically started up. And at the top, you will you see the name of your server. And let's log in. So I'm going to log in as an administrator because that's what I'm logged in locally. But again, if you guys are doing this within a part of an Active Directory, you can log in as yourself as long as you have administrative rights on the server uh, because. The only reason I say on the server is because you haven't fully configured your SharePoint yet to tell it who's an administrator, who's a contri uh, contributor, uh, a designer, and, and all those other roles that it has. Um, I've noticed that with the IE, I haven't pushed out all the Windows updates to this machine, but best practice is you need to push out all the Windows updates to your machine. Okay, guys? Push that out before you start the installation. I should have told you guys that in the very beginning. But uh, other than that, look, it, we are up and running with our SharePoint Foundation 2010. Uh, there's also there's a lot of stuff to customize on on this guy, and that's going to be in future videos. This this is going to be a playlist that I'm going to create, and uh, hopefully you guys tune in. But uh, I want to go to start, and I want to go to all programs. And as you can see, you got a MySQL Server 2008, but you don't have a management tool. What's up with that? Well, you got two options. If your your workstation, the machine that you work on every day, has uh, SQL Management Studios, you could always uh, open up the ports on this server, on your SharePoint servers, so you can access the database. Or uh, if you don't have that and you want to work on the server every time, which I don't really recommend. I, I normally like to work remotely into the machines, just do our RDP or do something else. If it comes with a database, I will have uh, management studios installed in my local machine that I use every day, and I will just connect to the database that way. So, again, uh, I will put I will place the link at for the management studio. Uh, I have my my virtual machine is actually 64 bit, so you got two flavors, 86 or 64. So depending on what server edition you have, let me backtrack that because you have to have a 64-bit Windows Server 2008 R2 or Service Pack 2. It has to be 64-bit. SharePoint Foundation 2010 will not install if your machine is not 64-bit. Uh, it's not a Windows Server 2008 R2 or a Windows 8 Service Pack 2. All right? So keep that in mind. But I will place the link at the bottom of the description so you guys can get your uh, hands on this uh, management studio tool. So what I'm going to do is double-click on this guy and you're gonna get this problem here I'm just gonna say don't show this message again and run the program because it is going to work and we're gonna close this up and as you can see it's extracting the files awesome so once your SQL Server 2008 uh, installer pops up you wanna go into the install you wanna do a new SQL Server standalone installation because you wanna add a new feature and a new feature would be our studio manager. It's going to run its check. It's going to pass. Hopefully it pass. And we're going to press OK. And it's going to continue the installation. And we want to set up the support files. We're going to hit install for that. This should be pretty quick. It shouldn't take too long. And once that comes up, we should have another dialog box to uh, click some settings. Okay, so you're going to get uh, a nice little setup support rules. I got a firewall warning, but it's okay. It allows me to continue. We're going to hit next. Installation. Uh, let's add a new feature to the existing one and hit next. And the only thing I don't like doing is when I do that, it's not going to give me the option to install the studio manager. Okay, so I'm going to go back and what I'm going to do is check off install a new instance okay perform a new installation and we're gonna hit next uh, hit next on this agree Hit next and there it goes the management tools basic that's basically what I want 
uh, we hit next and hit next again uh, I'm gonna leave this I won't check this out and next I passed but it skipped three which is okay hit next and install again uh, <laughs> I catch you guys when it is done and uh, we're gonna connect to our database and make sure we are able to connect to our database see you then okay so it looks like the management tools basic is uh, finished and installed successfully so that's awesome we're gonna hit next and we're gonna close it we're gonna close this as well and I'm gonna go to start all programs gonna go into here and I'm I normally like to put a shortcut to the desktop okay and let's double click on this and let's log in into our database I want to make sure I have access to my database uh, because most likely I would love to run reports manually so what you guys want to do from here I normally like to do a browse and then do a network servers and see if it picks up anything or local doesn't look like it's picking any of the local stuff up Blah. so what I like to do is uh, go to BJ the name of your server backslash and the name of the database that you are trying to connect to so by default it gives you the database name is SharePoint all right I don't think it's case sensitive so you guys don't have to worry about it. make sure the name of your server backslash hit connect and if everything goes well that dialog box should disappear you shouldn't get a warning and you should be able to access your database so let's go to databases let's go into uh, I don't know there's, there's so many of them so let's go to the w, uh, WSS search BJ and let's go to the table these are all the tables that you guys again I haven't entered anything as of yet uh, but this is where you get to play all right uh, another thing I would like to do is go to start all programs and within Microsoft SharePoint 2000 and 10 products you want to right click and send your Centru administrator uh, shortcut to the desktop as well as your management tool because you know PowerShell is awesome so most likely I'm gonna show you guys some PowerShell stuff with SharePoint uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this installation and configuration of SharePoint 2010 foundation uh, I should be coming out with more videos of how to do this how to do that if you guys have any uh, requests that you want to see of future videos of dealing with SharePoint 2010 uh, shoot me a comment right below and give me a thumbs up and I catch you guys on the next video peace out